questions. I know, but it is now time for member statements. Member statements, I recognize the member for Brampton West. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Today I rise to recognize the inspiring journey and contributions of Mr. Lajpat Rai Prasher. A Canadian success story, Mr. Prasher came to this country over 50 years ago with a vision for a better future. Through hard work and dedication, he established and grew a telecom enterprise from modest beginnings, eventually selling it to Atalas, a leading Canadian telecommunications provider. Nice. Mr. Prasher's impact goes beyond business. He has dedicated his life to supporting strong community values and fostering relationships between Canada and his country of birth. Knowing, no, known for his openness and inclusivity towards all faith, he is highly respected in the community. Recently, Mr. Prasher received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Canadian Hindu Chamber of Commerce, recognizing his long-standing contributions as an entrepreneur and a community leader. His life exemplifies the spirit of resilience and community that defines Canada. Madam Speaker, I am honoured to call him my friend and mentor. Congratulations, Mr. Lajpat Rai Prashad. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Speaker. I was honoured uh, to join Rob Babbitt and his family and colleagues as they presented a cheque to McMaster Children's Hospital to purchase a new uh, cribbet for the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, it, this is in honour of Diane Babbitt. The Babbitt family has raised funds for the Children's Hospital since 2009 by holding an annual golf tournament in her name. The proceeds have contributed to three rooftop playgrounds that allow patients and their families to play outside and to gather for things like movie nights and pictures, things that would be impossible for children and their families that spend so much time uh, in, in, at the hospital. I would like to say that we also had a chance to tour uh, the cancer ward and see the remarkable things that the folks at McMaster Children's Hospital do, and you would know that, Speaker. Uh, we saw the incredible ways that staff um, have been able to use the donations from the Babbitt family to improve uh, patient experience for the kids and for their families and for the siblings, too. Uh, we have to remember that, you know, that when one child is sick, the entire family uh, is impacted, and this, the Babbitt family understands that, and their commitment is incredible. Uh, so I wanted to say that I appreciate uh, uh, seeing uh, the, the McMaster Children's Hospital. I, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate everyone in that hospital that goes out of the way to make sure that children and their families that are, uh, you know, experiencing life-limiting or perhaps sometimes life-ending experiences, that they do everything they can to make sure that they live in dignity and that they have healthy outcomes. And I want to thank, uh, uh, thank uh, the, the community who donates the funds to make sure that our families, uh, when they're going through the worst possible ima thing imaginable, they may feel alone when they're in the hospital, but when they see those playgrounds, when they see those contributions, that they know there's in fact a community behind them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Recognize the member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Ontario's 31,500 physicians delivering emergency care, managing chronic conditions, promoting preventive health are the backbone of healthy and happy communities. So thank you for your service. With Ontario's population growing and aging, having access to quality health care is more critical than ever. As a proud Schulich MBA graduate, I'm thrilled to see my alma mater, York University, building Canada's first medical school dedicated to training primary care physicians backed by an initial investment of $9 million from 2024 budget, building a better Ontario. Set to open in September 2028, York University School of Medicine will be devoting approximately 70% of its new postgraduate seats to primary care and will have up to 240 undergraduates, 293 postgraduate seats once at a full capacity. Together with investments like this, we are building a stronger healthcare system that meets for evolving needs of residents from Mississauga, Malton and Ontario. Madam Speaker, this is the commitment our government added 260 new undergraduates, 449 new postgraduate medical seats, 
I want to wish my best of luck to all the future doctors of York University. I'm excited to see the community coming together to support this project. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Minister of Health. And thank you, President Rhonda, for all your support. Together, we're going to build a better, stronger Ontario. I recognize the member for Toronto St. Paul's. Today is a big day. The Conservative government will unleash their fall economic statement, letting Ontarians know what is and what is not their priority. So far, we know the government has committed to giving Ontarians $200 rebate checks. Some are calling these checks bribe money, as their timing just ahead of a possible early election couldn't be more coincidental. This government has also made sweeping billion-dollar deals to help liquor up Ontarians, bribes and boobs. Well, we the people have some other priorities, and we are eager to see the fall economic statement address them. Properly fund health care. Too many people in our community do not have access to a family doctor. They end up in the ER. Well, that's if their ER is open. Invest in real affordable housing, including protections for tenants, like rent control on all buildings, eliminating abusive above-guideline rent increases, and a complete scrap and replacement of Tarion in order to support new homeowners, including some victims of fraud, buying homes that have never been built. Actually tackle gridlock, finish and open our Eglinton Crosstown LRT, one of this government's biggest and most expensive failures to date. We need investments in the Ontario Arts Council, which currently has a starving artist budget, despite pleas from artists and cultural workers across Ontario. And this government can fix our schools, address the repair backlog, and invest in more education workers and mental health supports for students, because I'd like to think that for this government, kids trump bribes and booze. Thank you, Speaker. I'll ask the member to withdraw her final comments. Withdraw. Thank you. I'm sorry. Withdraw. Thank you. Further response or further member statements? I recognize the member for Kitchener South Hespeler. On, uh, on October 19th, I held my second annual Fall Festival, which is the one community event that I do, and my main goal there is to provide a, a day that, for families and children, is really, really worth coming out to. Uh, so we hire, we rent out beautifully, uh, beautiful Steckley Heritage Farm in Kitchener South Hespeler, um, have pumpkins and food trucks and, and face painting, and uh, do my best to make it something uh, that's really worth going to. Um, I had a huge amount of help. We had wonderful food trucks. We had uh, Faux Cheesy, Beaver Tails, and Lean's Shop. Um, and we also had some amazing face painters with Brie and Robin, and some help from my friends at Extreme Motors, Dave and Adnan, for moving uh, 200 pumpkins. I also want to shout out a lot of my wonderful volunteers, which include my parents, um, as well as Caitlin, Michael, Gabe, Marie, Ron, Megan, and Corey. But the people that I really want to uh, shout out are my office staff, my constituency office staff, my office manager, Benita, and Anna, Jerry, and Caitlin. Uh, it was an uh, organizational uh, challenge pulling this together, but what stuck out to me was as I walked around uh, the farm, the number of residents that came up to me and told me a story about how my office staff and my caseworkers had fixed something for them, how they had been the only people to listen and care when they were struggling with something, and it really uh, stuck out to me at just how incredible my office workers are. I know we all have them, but I'm particularly shouting out mine today. So, Benita, Jerry, Caitlin, Anna, thank you so much. I would not be able to do my job without you. Thank you. For the member statements, I recognize the member for London, Fanshawe. Thank you. I rise today to speak on behalf of workers of Ontario who are the backbone of our province. Yet, despite all they do for us, they continue to face challenges. This government pretends to have workers for workers, but recently events tell a different story. Look at QP Local 2361 at the University of Western Ontario. They stood strong for 330 members in their fight for fair wages, respect and improved work conditions. But in their fight for better conditions and wage parity with similar other union positions, what did they encounter? They faced the deployment of scab labour, an unacceptable practice that undermines the bargaining process, threatens fair wages and diminishes workplace 
workplace safety. I'm glad that QP Local 2361 could ratify an agreement with their employer, but I can't help but be concerned about the next group and whether they can exercise their right to free and fair collective bargaining. Ontario needs strong, immediate scab labour protection. This government needs to pass the bill for, that the NDP proposed, Bill 90, Anti-Scab Labour Act, because when it's passed, there will be Ontario legislation that will make it illegal for employers to hire scabs during strikes and lockouts. We believe in fair wages safe workplaces and meaningful protections to QP Local 2361 and all Ontario workers. We see you and we stand with you. It's time for Ontario to stand up for workers and deliver the protections they need more now than ever. So I ask this government to pass the NDP Bill 90, the Anti-Scab Labour Act, today, now. Thank you very much. The next member's statement. The member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, as we approach Remembrance Day, I want to take a moment to recognize the many meaningful services that are held across Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Each year, these ceremonies allow us to honour and remember those who have sacrificed for our freedom. And while I would love, love to attend all of these services, I do want to highlight one in particular today. The Remembrance Day service at Wilton Cemetaph, organized primarily by Lion Mike Shabinsky of the Odessa and District Lions Club. For 40 years, Mike has dedicated his time to this important event in collaboration with the military. His commitment to ensuring that we remember and reflect on the sacrifices made by our veterans is truly commendable. This Remembrance Day service typically attracts around 200 attendees including military personnel, veterans, school children, wreath layers, and representatives from the police, EMS, and first responders. The Odessa Lion Club, Lions Club accomplishes so much each year, from supporting local hospitals and public schools, to funding and building parks and playgrounds, and preparing food baskets for families in need. Their work on Remembrance Day also has an incredible impact on our community. So I say thank you to Mike for his dedication and his leadership he truly embodies the spirit of service that Lions Club stands for, and his impact on the community will be felt for generations. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Guelph. Thank you. Good morning, Speaker. I rise on behalf of the board, staff, volunteers, and clients of Community Living Guelph Wellington. I participated in a meet and greet with CLGW on the weekend, which the Speaker attended representing the Wellington part of GW. The stories I heard from frontline staff, parents, and participants were heartbreaking. The chronic underfunding of programs for people with developmental disabilities is leading to service cuts and the selling off of housing assets. People are desperate for help. CLGW's treasurer pointed out that over the last 30 years, the organization has received a 7% funding increase when inflation was 60%. They are covering 2024 costs with 1994 dollars and are experiencing a funding deficit of $3 million. Speaker, one parent whose adult son has been on the waiting list for housing for over a decade asked me in tears if she had to commit suicide for her son to move up the housing list. Speaker, the Premier said that if you can't work, he will make sure you are cared for. Many people with developmental disabilities cannot find employment and require 24-7 care. They are not being properly cared for when services, supportive housing and programs are being cut. I believe we are more caring province than this, and I am eager and willing to work across party lines to provide the care these families deserve. Thank you very much to the member for Guelph. <coughs> member statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Speaker. It's a privilege to rise in the legislature today. Last week, I was honoured to participate in the 40th anniversary celebration for the Sarnia Lambton Rebound, an award winning organization in Lambton County that focuses on the well being of young people and their families. Since its founding in 1984, Sarnia Lambton <coughs> Rebound has successfully served over 40,000 young people from across Sarnia Lambton. 
Started by local residents Barry Symington, D. Cox, and Terry Fitzgerald, Rebound's original focus was on bringing young people in the community together to learn positive social skills that would assist them in dealing with the transition from childhood to adulthood and the challenging years in between. In addition to positive social skills, Today, youth aged 8 to 24 can access programming at Rebound that supports challenges with mental health, stigma, identity, isolation, bullying, and uh, pressures from the social media. In addition, youth are able to participate in skill building workshops and youth focused community events like Youth Makers Expo, the Red Carpet Ready event, the Act 2 theater program, the Rebound Rocks Tour, and much more. In total, 2,491 local youth accessed over 20 programs at Rebound last year. Mr. Speaker, Rebound has been an invaluable resource for youth and families in Sarnia Lampton for the last four decades. I want to congratulate Executive Director Michelle Holbrook and all the staff, volunteers and supporters of Rebound on this momentous anniversary. On behalf of the Government of Ontario, wish them continued success in everything they do. Thank you. Well said. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. Um, one week ago, the Hospice of Windsor and Essex County revealed some incredible news. The 22nd annual Hospice face to face campaign raised this year just over $110,000, a new record. This brings a total campaign fundraising to more than $1.8 million for hospice. Wow. As Executive Director of Hospice, Catherine Bordelin so aptly put, our community always shows up and we are always so grateful. The Face Face fundraiser supports the Fairly Family Transportation Program and supports rides for hospice patients and families across the community. Many of these are delivered through the Genie, the Granting Exceptional and Impactful Experiences Program, a unique partnership between hospice and Essex Windsor EMS that allows clients to travel in a retrofitted ambulance. Equally touching this year was its dedication to the memory of Dr. Jamie Henderson, the honorary co-chair of the Face to Face campaign for many years. Dr. Henderson personified the compassion, kindness and gratitude for which our hospice is known and helped me greatly in crafting the tribute to his good friend, Araring's former MPP Michael Ray. So to John Fairley and the entire Fairley family, thank you for your passion and dedication to keeping our community an incredible place. And to Catherine and all the staff at Hospice, your service to our loved ones is beloved and appreciated. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. Introduction of visit.